So here, we're gonna listen to the whole song again because it's wonderful. Okay. Here we go. New shows, new show tunes. Welcome to the Magic Gathering Strat Show. It's me, Brennan, your lovable host. Along with me, as always, is my one co-host for the evening, Sam, the Vault Boy Hunter. Say hello, Sam. Hello, everybody. How's it going out there in TV land tonight? In TV land, they're doing fine. Excellent. <laughs> well, this is episode 34. So what do we do now? Question mark? Don't know. We'll talk about it a little bit. What we have, standard popper, for now. Our week's in review, classic popper. But this week in standard popper... We had PDC Magic working, yes. That so was the nice. real feat. That was the real good feat. <laughs> it's good to have it back. Yep. It is nice. It makes my job infinitely easier. Alright, what do we got here? <clears throat> SPDC31.3 This past November 1st, 18 players, 18 reported. Thank you very much. Three rounds, Swiss top eight playoff first place gets points for the best name so far of any deck i've seen perfectly treasonable by telcar <laughs> followed by green red landfall demir grind by the lovely and talented dr chris baker <sighs> then you have soul tie exploit black red aggro then you have Blue White Eldrazi. Hmm. And beneath that, you have Esper My Sacrifice by Roberto Remedio. And then you have the unfortunately named Jeskai Concer. <gasps> TBG. I don't even know what that means. But let's take a look at the winner. Perfectly treasonable. Why you ask is it called that? Because there's four active treason. That's crazy. But what we have here, Gurmag Angler. It's cool. Sultai Emissary. Awesome. Heel Cutter, which seems to be an all-star lately. Nantuko Husk. I like this down here. Three Mortuary Mire. Very nice. Four active treason. Four collateral damage. What are you killing to oh I guess you have the dragon fodders here. But still You also have the, the Act of Treasons. Oh, that's very true. You grab them with the Act of Treason, destroy them with collateral. Ooh, or altars reap them. Nice. Or um Huskum. Yeah. Nantuko. Mmm. Delicious. I see what it is very now. Tasty. I'm with you. I'm caught up. I'm on the same page. Picking up what you're putting down. I smell what the Sam is cooking. Two Bitter Revelation. Two Chandra's Fury. Interesting. Two Teamer Battle Rage. Two Tormenting Voice. And uh, my current favorite regular popper deck. 
the Turbo Exhum Team or Battle, or excuse me, Tormenting Voice is a major player. Touch of the Void. Rounding out the spells. I Sign wonder why Bitter Rev over read the bugs. Bitter uh, Rev? Two reasons. <laughs> yeah. Um, fills your graveyard so you can angler sooner? Maybe they just didn't want to jam, jam up the three spot too hard because it is pretty three heavy. Yeah. I'm not sure. So, read the bones. So, you have... Scry to draw to awesome bitter revel. Let's look at four, two in hand, two in yard. Yeah, so it does. Yeah, like I said it fills up your graveyard and you lose two life. I think it's just for the delve. Yeah, probably. That's Cause. why a lot of these decks run like a one off of Rakasha's Secret. Yeah, Rakasha. You were the cat lady, black <laughs> lady cat thing. Okay. <laughs> Rock Sasha. I don't even know how to spell it. Um, there's lots of silent cues in it. I'm not sure either. And, and an H. Two H's. With a V. Some umlauts. I don't know. Over the V's. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> yeah. So there you have it. You grab their stuff. You kill their stuff. You kill them with their stuff. Mmm, that seems fun. Can't really go wrong with that at all. I like the Butcher's Glee. A lot of these decks are featuring Butcher's Glee, and it's just a really simple. Really effective little combat trick. Yes, it is. And, and Boiling Earth, even though I don't think you're playing it for the Awaken. <laughs> no, they're playing it to get rid of tokens. And this has a pretty cool, with the three Mage Rings, I wonder, you probably swap out like two Furies and one Bitter Rev, and then just go like full aggro. I'll just throw it out there. Yeah, just be like, oh, you're playing control? Well, my answer to your control deck is I'm going to drop a turn two Mage Ring Bully and you're, you're going to die to it five turns later. I mean, that little dude is right. tough stuff. So What's awesome is you put out a blocker to block Mage Ring. You act of treason, whatever their blocker is. Mage Ring gets bigger and you hit them with what they just put out there. That's just dirty. I mean, that's just not any anywhere near nice. And then if <laughs> nope. you do it, like, majoring with Team or Battle Rage, I know I watched that video Dan put up. Yeah. He was in the Red Green Landfall versus Mono Red. I mean, majoring versus and Team or Battle Rage. It's pretty hot. Like, I think the dude did him like. 14 points of damage with this, this basically those two cards alone it was just completely ridiculous I kind of fell in love with it a little though so <laughs> yeah it is pretty cool I the like one that. thing I can, uh -huh. I'm kind of interested in is why Complete Disregard has not found a home yet yeah um, I thought it would I thought that was going to be the one that was going to be the uh, the new uh, hotness, but I mean, it kills everything in here, but angler. Yeah. And an exile. <clears throat> Is that not good enough? I guess it's not. I mean, the one thing touch has going for it is it does go to the face. Yeah, touch is um, touch is pretty cool. I just like that it's void even though it's red so awesome i i mean when i first saw the void i thought oh well that's flavorful and it won't really amount to anything but i think it's awesome i actually think it's probably like the best thought out of all the mechanics in battle i agree it's just a lot of fun and it's fun to draft and it's fun to build around so right 
Yeah, the um, the one that's harder hardest to do was the ingest process, but devoid seems to work in other formats too because there's so much out there that gives a protection from a color or you know effect kill mono colored creature. Well, guess what? This doesn't have color at all. <laughs> wow, well, yeah, I completely disagree. Takes out um, Guardian of the Gelp Pact. Dun dun dun! You caught it, sir. Stupid, all all the stupid little pro black things. So that's pretty cool. Yep. So there you go, Mono Black Control. In case you needed to be any stronger. <laughs> right. Control. But yeah, Touch of the Void's pretty awesome. Even though it's three mana for three damage, it's still. I, I think it's worth it. Looks good. I think it's the maybe the best of the three for threes that Red has had recently because exiling is super nice. Oh yeah, way we, better even than just, uh, what was the one well, red red Bolt of Karanos or whatever? Yeah, Bolt with the scry one. Yeah. Meh. I mean, if I'm going to go for a marginal effect, Exile is my marginal effect of choice. I agree. There's too much stuff that recurs. Getting stuff back. No thank I think you. Any, of the, any of the commons that have Exile attached to them yeah. in from battle could see play, like any of the removal spells basically, could see play in Classic Popper overall. Hmm. They're maybe a little bit slow, but like just the thought of like facing against like playing a a tortured existence deck facing off against touches and um, complete disregards like it kind of wrecks your plan. So that's true. Well, there you go, folks. What? Do we have next? We have MPDC. Look at here. 3102. 19 players, 17 reported. That's okay. I mean, happened today, and I was copying this earlier, so it's pretty good. I got the top eight. Not too bad. But look what's number one again. Perfectly treasonable. By Telcar. That's crazy. But it works. So. We get Orzov Warriors in second. RG Landfall. And fourth is along with Boros. <clears throat> Excuse me. Black Red Aggro. Is it Prowess? Top eight. Is it Lust? Okay, well. Seems to be a theme here. And then another landfall deck rounding up the top eight. <clears throat> Since we already talked about perfectly treasonable, let's talk about something else. How about a little Orzov Warriors? It's interesting. I uh, I didn't know what to think about it at first. But we have here, we got Herald of Dromoka, Sandstep Outcast, Cleric of the Forward Order, Interesting. Stone Haven Medic. Disowned Ancestor. It's been a while since I've seen that card. Mardu Horde Chief. Sultai Scavenger. And this cool little uh, Calastria Night Watch. Now you may be asking yourself, hey, how come I don't know what Calastria Night Watch is? Well, let's see. That's because it is very okay. expensive to cast. <laughs> but when you gain life, it gains flying. It's a 4-5 for five, 5 in black. It's 4 in a black. So, when you gain life through your other things up here, or through stuff like um, Harsh Sustenance, that gives you life, correct? Yeah. Yeah. It drains and gives you life. That's it. For all your creatures. Mm, very nice. So you can have a lot of things working in concert 
to get your night watch up in the air and hitting for more. And apparently with vigilance the night watch is it Let's see. Gains flying until end of turn. No, no vigilance. But what does uh, harsh sustenance do? Harsh sustenance deals X damage to target creature or player, and you gain X life or X as a number of creatures. No, no vigilance on that one. I'm surprised that it's in there. If it's not a oh no, it's a warrior. Which one? The cholesterol night watch. Yeah. All it's these a warriors. warriors. A warrior right, vampire gets, ally. Yeah, so it gets vigilance from um, from the one warrior dude that's in there that gives all warriors vigilance. Oh, is that the forward order? Uh, asking me all <laughs> these tricky questions. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's Harold or Dromacar. Harold, let's look it up. It's a, Harold it's, it's, of... Dro Mocha. A Dromoka shake sounds good. Other warriors have vigilance. That's right, sir. So it gives all of your stuff vigilance. Wow. It's all of your creatures are warriors, except for maybe the Stonehaven medic. Is it? Let's see. Stonehaven medic. Cleric. Yep. But I mean, you're tapping that in any way. But yeah, the Stonehaven Medic, though, just turns on your life gain pluses. So it seems pretty necessary. But you also got Foul Tongue Shriek, which, again, is a card I thought would see more play. But it hasn't. It's weird to me. But I guess it just doesn't fit anywhere. That's too bad. And there's the Butcher's Glee again. Look at that. And two more on the sideboard. Feet of resistance, smite the monster. Shouldn't I just say smite the angler? I think that's what that should, should be changed to. Just smite the angler. And you have healing. It's a shame that feet since it's What's all that? around. Good gosh. Feet <laughs> of resistance. Can't get away from that effect. Nope. Healing can't. Gain four, draw what? a card. Oh my lord. <laughs> hey. Gaining life gains you bonuses, and drawing a card is drawing a card. Doesn't that cost like 600 mana? No, three. No. Three's not bad. Two and a white. <clears throat> yep. I guess that's reasonable to draw a card. Right. Well, same with Angelic Gift. Three of those. That's flying great. Gains flying and draw a card. So, so that's not that's not bad. You no. like you could go ahead and just throw your big vampire into the air with it. Worst comes to worst. That's true. Very true indeed. Or a big old ancestor booties flying around. Because <laughs> who doesn't want that, right? Giant uh, ancestor people, booty. <laughs> people don't like their giant ancestors. This seems like this would be a deck with maybe maybe you want to jam a couple more Cherry Myers into it. Pull your stuff back in, yeah. yeah. I could see... Not on. Yeah. But you have four, eight things that come into play tapped already. Ah, uh, you do. Yeah. That's the problem. Do you really need the wilds would be my question. And a two color deck. Um, I would swap out two for two of Myers, just for the chance do, of bringing it back in. I would do one Swamp and one Wilds for two of Myers. Hmm. That's what That's I would bad. do. Yeah. But all in all, I mean, he did pretty good. When you look, he only <laughs> lost to the winner, and he lost to Black Red Aggro. Which I think this black red aggro is it's pretty rough. I mean, it's got a lot of really good tools right now. 
Right. This this Saltai Emissary plus Alter's Reap and Bone Splitters is just so much freaking value at this point. Like that is really oh, nice. It's just yeah, and he's uh, that's a freak, a freak AK. He's even playing two shambling goblins to have even more sacrifice. <laughs> wow, nice. And dragon fodder. So I mean, he kind of he went whole hog on the idea. So and no cards missing. So this deck is pre pre uh, dragons and origins and um, which one like the wars of? No, the black red aggro. Well, deck. it has nine cards. Nine cards from the new sets. Oh, it does. Oh, he just yeah. didn't list them out. Mortuary, uh, no. Two Mortuary Mire. Two Mortuary Mires. Um, what else? Two, or uh, a Boiling Earth? Is Main Boiling deck. Earth? Wow. And then... Let's see. A couple else. sideboard cards. Yeah. Undead Servant's fine. I'm trying to figure out what else is in there. Hmm. Fire Impulse was from Origins. Right. I think Origins is in uh, yeah. this database yet. It isn't? Oh my god, no. it isn't. Holy crap. Okay. Yeah, lots of Origins. <laughs> Because that's what yeah. I was looking for. I was like, well, that's Origins. Undead Servant, Fiery Impulse, um, Boiling Earth. Yeah, so those... So, I mean, that, that's still, like, just a few cards. Wow. But it looks like a good deck, so... It's pretty cool. Again, Foul Tongue Shriek showing up in the sideboard. Seems pretty cool. And again, it only lost to Red Green Landfall, which is what I think will... <laughs> That being the kind of the dominant deck. That deck is um, tough. Right. Like, super hardcore. Super hardcore, so. Uh, anytime you see Territorial Bayloth, you know something's gone wrong in your <laughs> life. Yeah. You, you aren't enjoying what's about to happen, <laughs> is, is, what, uh, is what you need to think when you see that land and they're playing the cool the swallow of growth have you seen that what's what's it called swallow of growth it's the i think it's two mana oh um, yeah the awaken one no um uh, target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn and you may put a land oh, from your hand onto God. your battlefield or green and a colorless holy crap yeah, that is so, landfall galore right there. I mean, that's it's pump and landfall, which pumps your landfall dudes. Um, and it's that's only amazing. two mana. Yeah, no, I like. I'm, I'm actually really fond of solar growth. I think it's a neat design on a card. So, no, that's pretty good. I just wish it wasn't Cura flavored art and flavor text. Oh, it's it got the sea monsters sense. on it. It's got like a sea lizard thingy with a tail. I'm like, nobody needs a tail. Legs are better. <laughs> S says you. That's just how I live my life. It's my it's my credo. <laughs> right. Don't don't put your yeah you know, don't put your dogma on me. Okay, I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on. Let's talk about. What was your week like, Sam? Anything happen? It's crazy. Um, it's awesome. Well, the Royals won the World Series last night. And I'm not a baseball fan. Um, but I was laying on the couch. And it was really nice and quiet. It was like 1130. Yeah. And, and my town erupted. <laughs> and took gunshots and fireworks. <laughs> God, and they stormed down. They stormed downtown and tore down light poles. Really? And, 
they stormed the stadium on campus and tore down the goalposts. And keeping in mind that we're twenty, we're we're basically an hour away from Kansas City, <laughs> Missouri, where the Royals play. Right. It was just like anarchy in Lawrence last night, and they went to the university and tore down the goalposts. The football team goalposts. So this. <laughs> Not in Kansas City, Missouri. Not on yes. a baseball field, but on a football field. Tore down yes. goalposts. But the morons that did it tweeted that they were doing it, and they put up photos and stuff. So well, they clearly have. A... <laughs> they clearly have life decision making issues. Oh, it was so dumb. <laughs> I was, I'm kind of embarrassed. Of about my little town last night from how they acted last night. Like, the crime report was like... There was like 80 different gunshot reports within like 20 minutes. People were standing outside shooting off guns because a baseball team won a baseball game. That is dangerous. It's ridiculous. But, um... I guess it is the first time in 30 years. Whatever. I don't really care. Um, Thursday is the first meeting of Paper Popper. Yay. At Boom, Boom Comics at 630. If anybody listening wants to show up, you can feel free to fly into Kansas City <laughs> International Airport, rent a, a car, drive to Lawrence, and play. Um uh, so far, I think I have about six guys that are going to show up. Um, so that's pretty <laughs> cool. I have I have a Zorius kitty. I have a tortured existence deck, and I have trinket. Nice. Built. So I spent twenty eight dollars to get three decks, um, which isn't bad. I no, mean, that's not bad at all. Um, and if it continues to build. I'll continue to add a deck every couple of weeks, basically. Um, That's cool. Next up, next up will be like Boros Kitty. Um, some of the decks will be unachievable, like One Land Spy, because Simeon Spirit Guides are six dollars, and Lotus Petals are like seven. And I'm not spending eighty dollars on a popper deck. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, I wanted I, I wanted to build Turbo de- Turbo Angler, but yeah, those. Those lotus petals, it's a killer. I mean, and none of them are in good shape. Like you, like you're spending seven dollars on something that's like extremely played. Like oh, right. all of the cards from back then look so freaking rough. I'm like, there were sleeves during Tempest Flock. Why do all these cards look so bad? <laughs> um, but... did, you, did you see the loading ready run where they go, they go back in time? Or they have a flashback. Like, I want to play this Lotus pet, this Lotus, and cast Shiv and Dragon. And it shows him putting his hands on the co- on the Lotus and, s- like, twisting it on the concrete. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't seen it, but I have heard, and I can't. I kind of, I wouldn't be able to watch that. <laughs> yeah. It, they, they captured a, a cringe moment. <laughs> Um, but already um, the guys are talking that I'm going to meet with on Thursday are talking about doing a commander popper night. Apparently you pick an uncommon mm-hmm. commander and then you just build the rest commons. Yep. Back so. back in popper to the people, we were planning on doing that before the show disbanded. Like we were uh-huh. having the audience pick our commanders. I kind of remember that. Yeah. Kind of. I'm going to do Miss Meadow Witch. You're going to what now? I'm going to pick Miss Meadow Witch. Oh. If you're not familiar with it, you should look it up. It's everything I love in magic. Okay. Mist Meadow Witch. One and an Azorius. For a Kithkin Wizard 1 1. It's reprinted in Commander recently. For two, a white and a blue, exile target creature. 
Return that creature to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Wow. That's, uh, that's gonna be some value right there. I believe the, uh, Mole Drifter that you cast earlier in the game will be coming back down. Uh, this card. Um, Mole Drifter, of course, Sky Fisher, all of the Enter the Battlefield effects, and white and blue have right. a few good ones, a couple good ones, uh, a few that I might be able to chain together into something that I can call my own. Yeah. I think I can make it special. I really wanted an Esper Commander, but there's only like one uncommon Esper card, and it's a vanilla 4-4 four, four flying for four. Well, you don't have to ever cast your commander. No, but really... That's why, that's why Progenitus is a commander. And then the other thing I thought about was skin, uh, uh, shrink maw, but I have to go mono black. And well, I don't. I want to play more than one color. I don't understand what you just said. Shrink maw. <laughs> when it comes into play, you destroy target non-black creature. Oh, I know. As I'm your just commander, saying. that would be pretty awesome, right? <laughs> right. Every time you cast them, destroy. Yeah, well, but I really want to play. I I really want to play a Miss Metal Witch deck. I think it's a good choice because um, I think I can have a lot of fun, get a lot of value. I'm, I mean, just this plus Seagate Oracle or Mana War or Aether Adapt, Mist Raven, any of the stupid blue things that come into play and draw you a card. Um, I mean. There's just so much you can do. So I'll probably do a video deck tech of that when I get it built. That'd be um, awesome. I have three that I'm going to upload tonight. I forgot to do them last night, and then I'll share them with you tomorrow. Okay. Cool. Completely fell asleep after oh, the fire. Hey and stop strut, <laughs> yeah. Stopped. So that's my week. Um, I will take pictures. Nice. At Boom. Of the hot, steamy, common flipping action um, for the next show. For hot so, popper, hot, hot popper, hot popper all up, all up in the areas. So nice. And then, oh yeah, I'm gonna PlayStation Four on Friday, and then next week Fallout Four comes out, and I'm gonna stream Fallout Four on the channel. Dun dun um, dun! That's and, cool. I will do a blind run, and then I will probably do, if the blind run goes good, I'll immediately follow up with a no-kill run. That will be my second Whoa, run. Oh, nice. Because I love no-kill if I can pull it off. Because um, I no-killed uh, Fallout New Vegas. Um, I've done it four different times now, because I think it's a lot more challenging. So, and I probably will end up doing an you only live once run, which is you get uh, like one life bar to complete the entire game. Damn. If you die, you, you don't get it. You basically just start over. I'll probably do one of those, but that'll probably be like the third or fourth run. So, Yikes. needless to say, I play these games quite a I play them over and over again, so... Well, hey. <laughs> All right. Well, that's cool. Um, look forward to seeing that on the channel. Something a little different for this channel, but that's cool. Okay. Dan is still out this week. Should be coming back. Popper Gauntlet starts real soon, folks. Start Six days? Up. Yeah. Start submitting decks if you haven't submitted them. Go now, submit. I, I don't mean like give in to us. I mean like actually give us a popper deck. Or maybe that is the and same thing. Maybe I am saying submit to our will to give us a popper deck. If you and if you want to mail us, you know, if you're somewhere else besides American, you want to mail us food from your country. 
That would be cool. We'll eat it live on the air and give you our opinions on it. We will. I like empanadas. I'm just saying there's South Americans that listen and I like empanadas. Bro, I can bring you some empanadas. We got empanadas all up in Texas. <laughs> yeah, there's a few places around here, but they're full of things like um, horrible vegan horribleness. Ugh, Why would you sorry. make a vegan empanada? Why does anything in this world happen that's evil? <laughs> I don't know. That's uh, yeah, weird. I don't know All right, well. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, it's me. Um, What is going on? Why do I have Modern Silver Black listed there? Did you play your match? Trying to think. I did and I lost. Oh. Yeah. So I'm three and two. Probably mathematically eliminated from the top eight. I think so. I don't think I can do any better. Maybe that's what I want to say. I wanted to lament. <sighs> oh well. So silver black looks like that's the end for me. It's it was always so close though. Like I always felt like I was just on the cusp of uh, winning each of the every time I played. So there you I know go. one match that you played that you won quite handily. Oh, there was that one. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't going to mention that. I was just going to let that it, sit. It's fine. <laughs> I, know, I, mean, I, know, I played three matches, and I, I don't think I was ever in any of them. Because I played you. Yeah. And the, next, the next week I copied your deck, and then I played against Soul Sisters. I swear to God. And that, that sounds awful. He was playing. He was playing white black, so he could play lingering souls. Oh, Never geez. had a shot. He just like I dealt him like eight damage in the first three turns, and then the game finished with me at zero and him at like forty-seven. Both games, <laughs> and then the third game I played. I was playing Tron because I was like, okay, play Tron, Sam. Just play Tron, and then I played Burn, and that was it. It's never had a shot in any of my <laughs> games. But oh, then Sam. I went to the drop. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Well, there you go, folks. Yeah, uh, I think I'm out of the top eight, but that's fine. I enjoyed playing it. It was fun. Um, deck updates. Oh, I've been playing that budget Eldrazi aggro deck online. Yeah, you sent that screenshot. Yeah, uh, here's the deal. You either win right, right away, or it is against Jeskai Black or some other form of control, and the games just go on and on and on. Yes, it is awful. Seriously. Um, it's fun when it wins, but when you don't win, you aren't dead quickly. And you're just sitting there watching the inevitable. That that kind of hurts. <laughs> the other deck I've been playing is um, that Marshmallow deck. Which is nothing but... Marshmallow deck? Yeah. Um, it's all... Here, let me bring it up. Yeah, um, bring it up. Because I'm not familiar with Marshmallow. Yeah, I mean, Marshmallow, the character... Marshmallow deck. When you see it, you'll go, oh, Brennan... Why are you the playing this? The character from Bob's Burgers, who's named Marshmallow. Bob's Burgers. Oh, I never watched Bob's Burgers. Oh my gosh, seriously? Yeah, never. It's amazing. It's amazing. You should try the first season. It just got renewed for like two more years. <laughs> really? It's, it's probably my favorite like long run animation since the Simpsons. Better than And I think Wait, whoa, whoa, hold up. We got to I got to I got to I got to check you on that cuz that's Okay. So, better better than Archer. 
it's it's a lot. I mean, it's the same guy who voices Archer, right? Doing it, and a lot. It's a lot of ad lib. It's more family friendly. It's not so crass, so I can watch it with my kid. My wife likes it. Um, Archer's fun, but I think I think like comparing it to The Simpsons is a lot more fair. Right. Um, Because it's kind of similar. I think it found its tone faster than The Simpsons did because The Simpsons didn't really get good until season four. But Bob was good after like episode two. It's just an amazing show. Oh, it's so good. I I love it. Yeah. Um, Yeah, you should try it. It's all on um, Netflix, like every episode except for the newest season. So. Okay. Marshmallow, oh my god. <laughs> Silk crap in the main. Those things are going for like a dollar fifty now. Yeah, they're they're ridiculous. I was watching the Pro Indianapolis and the top the finals was Abzan versus like an Esper tokens deck and they were running Silk Crap main. Mm-hmm. I guess it's as close to Journey to Nowhere as you can get, right? What's that? It's clo- as close to Journey to Nowhere as we're going to get anymore. Yeah. That and Quarantine Field, which is awesome. Uh, and also... Where's, the, where's, snares. The, where's the fast one? Nope. nope. Stasis Snare. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty handy. Let me tell you about it. Um, the... Or for it is amazing if you haven't checked that out. Yeah. This deck was designed to basically beat, like it has a picture here. Oh, wait, where's the picture? Where's the picture? Where's the picture? There it is. Basically to defeat all the Abzan decks. But as soon as this came out, it was awesome. But then everybody started making their own version. And, and I have died about 10 times to a um, Jeskai version and an Esper version of the same deck, except they make it three color, um, add all the expensive lands, which is kind of the antithesis of this deck, and um, do that. But when this, I have won on time, uh, like three times, and people just quitting after a certain point, what does probably start about do? ten times. What's that? Is that the... Starfield, what is that? That's the engine card, That's right? That's Opalescence. It basically... So it turns um, all, your creature, all your artifact or enchantments into, all, into creatures? Uh, it starts off, you just get enchantments back from the graveyard, but then after you have seven or five, um, non-aura enchantments become um, creatures. And I, you know what I... Oh, and you put that chance onto the battlefield wow yeah. that's pretty good that's pretty good oh it is good because none of these all of these are the ones where you can just throw them out there and it'll grab it you know you can grab something you don't have to cast it onto something this is surprisingly effective yeah somebody played it against me at the pre-release yeah it is way better than I thought it was most common ways I win are not milling. Like, I've milled two people out. And that was it. The most common way is casting an Awakened Planar Outburst and just beating down with a 4-4 Planes. And if you cast two, you can put the counters on the same, same Planes and have an 8-8. You can, but then that dragon spell that makes you sacrifice gets played, like, all day long now. Yeah, the crux. Yeah, and this is cool. Like I said, but... Yeah. Yeah, nobody online is playing now. Like, nobody's playing any of the decks that this was designed to beat anymore online. That's the best I can figure. Everybody's playing Dark Jeskai or some version of this that has more expensive cards. I mean, Dark Jeskai is amazing. 
and it's an amazing deck, so it's understandable. I like calling it Is It Oreos Better. Ah, I, I do like the Is It Oreo. <laughs> yes, Is It Oreos is. I think the that way. was Ephro's name for it, right? Whose? Yeah, Ephro's, yes. Ephros? Yeah, so Ephros. Is It Oreos is pretty <laughs> fine. Is It Oreos is, is beautiful. But yeah, this is a pretty. Oh, yeah, you can make it non budget if you want to. Oh, yeah, you can jump up the cost to $206.62. Why not? Yeah, why, why the hell not? Just add, basically, you're adding flooded strands, prairie streams, and um, one more quarantine field. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's all the money. One wind swept, wept, one wind swept. Yep. That's that's where the cash is, but um, you know what? I never found. I actually never found a problem with the lands. I know, but remember, pro star fixated on thinning. Yes, they are. Seriously, they love to thin. And I guess if your game goes to round fifteen or turn fifteen, sure. But. It is negligible. I mean, it's such a, it's such a small part, and all the shuffling, like, adds so much to the game time and all of that. It just seems like it's a silly. Yeah. Well, we're we're done with fetches come January, so no more fetches. So, so close, and the I mean, I don't think we're gonna see him in shadows. I don't think they're going to reprint no. that. Because even so. uh, Morrow said that the new duels will not have fetches through their entire stay. Which means, like, this is it. Because the new duels are just going to be phasing out by the time the next set would come out. See what I mean? Right. So, yeah, they're done. No more fetches. Basically said that... When uh, Oath comes in, cons and faint leap. Yep. Yeah. And that will leave dragons, which is stupid to leave by itself because it's not a good set standalone. <laughs> and it'll leave Oath and Battle. And Origins. And Origins. And then when... Oh, God, I don't even have that. So, well... Dragons and Origins rotate out when Shadow fits? Nope, just dragons. Just dragons. Yep. Uh, Origins doesn't good. rotate out until Return to Return to Ravnica comes out. Return to Return to Return to Ravnica. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Morrow said yesterday, he said, yep, every other set essentially, not, not numerically, but in practice, will be a return set. What the... What? Yeah. 50% of all new sets that come out will be return sets. But we don't need a return. What happened to new IPs? Uh, screw you. That's what happened. We don't want more return sets, Wizards. We don't need to go back to Innistrad so soon. They create. I'm telling. Like I said in my tweets, Girapur was right there. I want, right I want Vren. I want Girapur. I want to see yeah, new flames. Would be cool. Um, so I think Roberto was like, "Go back to Lara," and I didn't even think that Anistrad existed anymore. I thought Abinson and, and Grizzlebrand destroyed it. And no, it's so, there because that's where Soren is, and they need Soren to help with the Eldrazi for some reason. Because wasn't he one of the ones that locked them up originally? A... Yes. I can't remember. That's so much story. He either, either that or he was one of the ones that screwed it up. Then can't they remember. all. But someone said that they think. Kozilek and Emrakul made their way to Innistrad. Yeah. 
I've read that online too. I mean, the vampires on uh, Zendikar were the slaves of the of the thingy, so maybe the ones on Innistrad will become their slaves or whatever. Yeah, but then J- yeah. then they then they're gonna have to make another Jace card, send him to Innistrad to go get um, what's a who's it? Hmm. I mean, the one thing that I can see that's good about going back to Innistrad is flashback. Yeah, that'd be cool. Flashback's awesome, but I mean, it's been I, a while now. Right. For the one person watching us, I want to make a proclamation. There will be none of the cards except the small chance of Cavern of Souls. They're not going to reprint anything major from Innistrad. So I would not expect to see Geist come back. It might come back in another form. But... I don't even think they'll reprint Snapcaster. I don't think they're going to do Snappy. I think that they're not going to do Willy of the Vell. We're oh. going to get a new Willy. Yeah, get a new one. Definitely not. But we're not going to get Willy of the Vell. No. And that's going to drive down anybody really wanting to get the set. Unless new Lily is comparable and I can't see how they could do another. <laughs> they made a new Jace that's comparable. It's more expensive than Big Daddy Jace. Or it was. That, it's not now. But. I think, yeah, but I mean, that people spiked it, and it's not as good as... I mean, it's never going to get banned in modern. I mean, it's just not that strong. So... Eh. In my opinion, I could be wrong. Yeah, I mean, it is... No, no, it's not going to get banned. It's way more fair yeah. than other Jace. I mean, the only the only truly bad Jace was the Jace the Mind Sculptor. I know he's kind of like the John Cena of Magic if you get the wrestling reference or he's the face of the company whether you like it or not. Um, <laughs> right. So there's yeah, going to be a Jace in every set. Yeah, he's yeah. such a he's such a feckless dude. Seriously, Jace as a hero is pathetic. He's just not very good at his job. No. So <sighs> anyway, he's kind of like he's kind of like the FBI on any serial killer TV show. Like, <laughs> oh, they're just out killing stuff. Let's go look at these crumbs over here or whatever. <laughs> like that's Jace. Like somebody should have saved Elspeth. Come on, Jace. What were you doing? Oh, you were being the living guild pact. Okay, that's fair. So you were shuffling papers and making people sure. play nice. Uh, I still I think Oath should be cool. Um, I hope they don't bear it too hard towards the Zendikar side. Though, because I feel like it could very easily become Fifth Dawn. Um, <laughs> if you remember Fifth Dawn at the end of Mirrodin block and it being horribly out of place and not, you know, didn't have any check or any overlap to the rest of Mirrodin block. So, <sighs> yeah, who knows what they're going to do because. Basically, Ugin said you can't kill, you can't keep killing, you know, Ulamog and cause it like an Emrakul or you'll summon something far, far worse. <laughs> but then I Jace mean, was some... all, oh, if, if Ulamog and them are like the hands of whatever this creature is reaching through the blind eternities, I wonder if we could pull him entirely into this plane. That's, that is canon, people. He actually thought that. So, Jace is like, hey, there's something enormously huge and powerful and horrible. Hmm. Let's just bring him bring him here all the way into Zendikar. Let's see if we can do that. 
I, I think that, I mean, I'm not saying that that sounds like a bad plan on Jace's part, but it seems kind of par for the course for the dude um, to maybe not approach things in the most clear-headed of manners. <laughs> yeah. Hey, why don't we bring Garuk with us, too? <laughs> yeah, maybe he can kill us. Maybe he can, maybe he can kill us and then pledge allegiance to Liliana or whatever's going on with this storyline right now. Or Garuk. Uh, I okay, I think that was enough nerdiness. It was. So anyway. Want to talk about a little classic popper? Um, maybe a second. I was going to say that the uh, standard popper gauntlet or standard popper uh, league is still going on, folks. So I hope you signed up. I know I have. Scheduling my uh, meet with my first meetup tomorrow, I believe. My guy is in Brazil. So is mine. And he's like, let's play at four o'clock on Wednesday. And four o'clock on Wednesday, his time is noon Wednesday. <laughs> yes, my our time. So I'm like, dude, I can play you at ten o'clock your time on Wednesday and 6 o'clock my time <laughs> because I'm back so, so I guess Brazil did their time change like two weeks ago yeah they did so right now in Brazil it's like 15 minutes till 2 o'clock in the morning Ugh. same oh well so the Brazil matches, I think, are going to be a little challenging to get in, but thankfully, a lot of them, a lot of the people are on our side of the in America because they're yeah. on our side yeah. one too, but just a different aspect of it. So, you know. yep, yep, yep. So anyway, just want to give another shout out to the standard popper league that Gwen's yep. putting on. The double double, right? Um, I guess if we want to hit it real quick, it's getting kind of late. We spent a lot of time vor vorthosing. Vorthos. Anything interesting uh, going on in the world of of uh, in the world of Ash in the yeah, background? Yeah, the dumb son of a cat. Seriously. He is irritating me lately. Where is... I don't see Classic Popper Tuesday. It's up. Oh, there it is. From last week. Turbo Fog. Wesley Snipes. It's a mild black control deck. Uh, 28 players. That's not bad. I mean, its vulture is not going away, right? Oh, I'm not putting this up on the screen. Yeah, there's, there are, a, there's a group of players that have banded together to do weirdness. Yes, you put. If you're gonna put that stuff in your names of your decks, I'm not gonna put them on the screen. Not that that's a big threat to anyone who plays, but seriously, <sighs> I try to keep this at least PG-13, and that ain't. I mean, it used to just be what's his face doing it, but now there's a whole bunch of them that are like it's the hashtag team Bijo Grijo, and they keep doing oddball stuff, mm -hmm. and I don't know if they want to get permit banned by a long time gone or what, so. But the fog deck is a pretty much just your classic Simic fog deck. Yep, arcane no denial, paint. brainstorm, erasure, moments piece, tangle, tangle main, awesome. Yep, deep analysis, muddle, and then uh, respite. Respite, wow, that's a good one. That's a good one. And then you have in the sideboard Lignify, one of my personal favorite green spells that no one plays except this guy. Thank you. But that's awesome. It's green removal. 
one and a green enchant creature. It's a tree folk aura. It's just tribal enchantment. Enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a tree folk with base power and toughness 04. He lost literally two games. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That is a, an actually an amazing turnout, like an amazing showing for a Turbo Fog deck. Two games. How much is this, I wonder, to buy? Uh, I don't think you can dis... There's no... Oh, ye of little faith. You can download it as a text file and then... Uh, Watch this. Oh, or you have magic tricks. I have magic tricks. Where is the sideboard? Dang it, didn't copy the sideboard. There we go. Well, I have half this stuff anyway, so. Sideboard. Type in the word sideboard. Import deck is 29, 29 bucks if you don't have any of it. But I have most of it. What's expensive? I'm looking now. The brainstorms. No brainstorm since it came out in what's a who's it? It's not expensive. Dang, it's tangle. A buck fifty per tangle. Hmm. Is this paper or online pricing? Paper. Okay. Yeah, it's I don't not know bad. what online is. Online, it's probably five five tickets. Hmm. Preridines and paper are like a buck eighty. Let's see, pre or they're eight fifty eight cents online. Yeah. Oh, I I have I have a full playset. I have three, and one of them is altered. So that's still pretty cool. My my popper group is just going to have to deal with me playing with some altered cards. <laughs> I'm going to judo kick them. Deal I'm with not, it. <laughs> judo kick not, them. I'm going to judo kick anybody. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, that's enough. Turbo Fox yeah, that's final. enough. Classic popper. Please stop putting up obscene deck names and Come we can on, talk guys. more. more. Come on, screw. All right, well, <laughs> please visit magicgatheringstrat.com, YouTube slash magicgatheringstrat, Patreon, if you like what you heard tonight, which, eh, I give us about a C plus. Patreon.com slash magicgatheringstrat, Twitter at magicgathstrat, you can follow me, it's at Cerulean says hi, or Sam is SPO7677. Can follow Dan at Dan Horning, Facebook.com slash Magic Gathering Strat. Please like and subscribe. Tell your friends and go to us on iTunes. I really appreciate it. So, for this week on the show, I am Brennan. I'm Sam. Remember, submit decks to the Popper Gauntlet. It starts on Sunday. Hurry, submit. Submit them all. This has been the Magic Gathering Strat Show.